all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Thank you, thank you, I guess that's my cue. Thank you everyone for, for joining uh, their participants. My name is Andras Castellis. I'm part of the UNIDIR Security Technology Program mostly working on, on cyber issues. Uh, welcome to today's sort of interactive workshop on confidence building tools, confidence building measures in international, in the context of international ICT, um, peace and security. We're gonna be presenting one of the tools that has been developed by, by our own very own unit here. Um, and for that, I'll share the screen with you. And after that, we'll have a, we'll have a little, little demo. I don't think I see anyone um, in, the, in the room in Katowice, but um, whoever is, is here, uh, Emmanuel, and I think uh, Annette, uh, if you wish to turn on the cameras, by all means do so. Um, I really would like this to be a very interactive uh, discussion if possible. Obviously, there's going to be plenty of, of space for uh, plenty of time for your questions as well. Um, but uh, without that, uh, I'll just start sharing my presentation. Okay, I guess uh, you can see the presentation. Yeah. Yes. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, so let's just dive into it. So um, it's essentially a website, but this website um, has, has quite a lot of uh, aspects to it. So essentially it's a, it's an interactive, what we call at a glance tool for, for cyber, for cyberspace, for cyber policies, uh, oh, voila, excuse me, for cyber policies covering all 193 uh, UN member states. It essentially maps the cybersecurity policy um, and, and as well as legislation um, of states, intergovernmental organizations, as well as um, other instruments and frameworks that may not be um, that may not be only of states or intergovernmental organizations. The, the purpose of it is essentially to facilitate transparency information exchange among states. And I'll come to that when I'll be talking more about uh, um, the confidence, build, confidence building part of this of this portal. Um, and our primary target audience are diplomats, but also policymakers in the capitals and other security policy experts. Um, that includes also the research community, including academia. Um, it was the portal itself was um, compiled, well, the data set was compiled in, in 2018 and then launched in 2019, very early, I think it was January 19. It has been developed and is maintained by Unidir Security and Technology Program, as I mentioned, that's where I'm coming from as well. Um, Unidir um, stands for United Nations Institute on Disarmament uh, Research. And as the name says, we mostly focus on researching of um, disarmament issues. One of the one of the angles that we're looking at are also the emerging or so-called emerging new technologies on the international peace and security. Unity is a, is a, is a autonomous entity within the, within the UN. So we, we, we largely um, rely on, on voluntary funding by the governments and other interested parties. So the, the, the portal, back to the portal itself, the portal uh, itself was, uh, was mentioned or recognized by 2021 consensus reports of both UN processes dedicated to international ICT um, peace and security, so uh, namely being the UN um, GGE and UN OEWG, so Open Energy Working Group and Group of Governmental Experts, respectively. And we're very happy to be able to, to have been able to participate in 2019 and 21 um, uh, Paris Peace Forum. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating show, trade show, fair, fair of, of, um, of peace dedicated dedicated projects by different organizations. So now to the concept of, of confidence building 
and confidence building measures, confidence building tool, and the way the way um, the cyber policy portal fits into this into this category. So confidence building measures or CBMs. So apologies if I refer to them as CBMs, are essentially an old concept that dates back to the to the Cold War. And the intention of the confidence building measures is to strengthen international peace and security by increasing, amongst other things, transparency, predictability of, of state behavior. So the rationale behind these tools or measures, depends how you frame it, um, is that um, the more transparent, the more states know of each other, the, the more the states know of the intentions of, of, of themselves, of each other, the more they know of policy frameworks or positions on particular issues within the context of international peace and security, the less, uh, um, less strenuous the relationships are going to be. And this tool, so uh, Cyber Policy Portal, helps to build trust and understanding in this way uh, between states. Um, we hope that it helps decrease and mitigate potential tensions between the states as well in this in this regard. They so CBMs or confidence building measures have have become uh, an important part of the um, UN negotiation processes on the international peace and security when, when it comes to the um, ICTs. And as I mentioned already, so um, Cyber Policy Portal, by far not the only CBM, has been mentioned by OEWG and GG, and these have paid uh, significant attention to, to, to CBMs in general. And I think through that, ascribing a significant importance to, to the CBMs in, in, this particular, in this particular field. You're more than welcome to, to, to visit the, the websites of the um, UNODA. Um, and, and read through through these reports and specifically on the confidence building confidence building tools and measures. So um, confidence building is not the only aim of the cyber policy portal, but it also promotes um, capacity building assistance, as well as um, serves the research community, as I mentioned at the beginning already I'll touch upon the second one in the next slide but allow me just a couple of seconds on how it promotes capacity building so by providing an overview of current I wouldn't perhaps say best practices but good practices in cyber policy making of all the countries um, policymakers as one of the target audience has the has the possibility to visit the cyber policy portal and review what these good practices perhaps are and think of how this could be transposed into 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 the different um, national context if if possible it's not always possible and as such the cvp cyber policy portal promotes the uh, the uh, supports these policy um, cyber policy teams or cyber policy experts national experts um, 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 with with our analytical tools that we have on on the websites. Again, bear with me. I'll be able to show you um, at the end a bit how how what I mean by these analytical tools. Um, so I think through that, Unity you know, showcases uh, certain efforts of states that, that that have new policies or existing policies. Some date back to to the to to late to the early I'm sorry 2010s. Um, and hopefully through that, we uh, indirectly motivate other states to, to check and update their, their national policies and, and sort of follow the, the emerging trends in policy in policy making, especially. Lost my mouse for a second, sorry. Oh. And um, as I mentioned, or as I teased, the, the re uh, we, we consider cyber policy portal to be a research tool as well. Um, it allows for for comparative analysis, um, which uh, enables uh, to uh, enables the users to compare up to three states or organizations of their respective um, cyber policy landscapes and legislations. It also it also has so the cyber policy portal also has uh, advanced features uh, as in advanced filters, which enable quick sorting between the states based on the content of on their on their profiles. So this is the landing page of the of the cyber policy portal and the, the QR code on the right hand side if you want to if you want to scan it's gonna allow you to visit the cyber policy portal or just simply type in uh, www.cyberpolicyportal.org.com 
and um, you'll land on Unilever's subpage, which is devoted to the cyber policy portal. And then you can just select uh, whichever country you want and, and visit their um, and their policy policies and legislation. So all the all the if you're with me and if you're clicking through the website right now, but if not, again, I'll show you at the end. But briefly, um, each of the state profiles also goes for the international intergovernmental organizations. But nonetheless, let's focus for a second for a second on states. Um, so all the state profiles um, include uh, four categories um, of, of, the, of the policy and legal uh, landscapes. So first is the cybersecurity strategy documents and various implementation frameworks. So implementing these particular uh, um, strategies. The second one is cybersecurity legislation, which uh, as I mentioned, allows to, to go through the national um, legislation that is dedicated to cybersecurity. Um, it features also every for every profile features also key dedicated structures and positions that are in charge domestically so nationally with uh, for cybersecurity policy, as well as uh, various international cooperation declarations, initiatives, activities. Sometimes um, in the in this category we go very granular and, and um, list um, pretty much all the, all the um, efforts that um, states are undertaking when it comes to international cooperation in the field of, uh, in the field of cyber, cyber security. Um, I'm very happy to be reporting also of the um, extended filter feature that we very recently implemented. So um, we unfortunately we don't have yet, I'll talk about that later as well. We don't have yet the search function on, on our website. It's, as I said at the beginning, it's meant to be at a glance tool. So it, by providing this map as, as, uh, as a landing page, I think it, it provides sort of the ease of use for, for the users to just click on a country they're interested in and go through their, their respective profile. But um, if, uh, one is interested, perhaps uh, that that is very apt for for the research community, more so than anyone else. Um, the the users can can quickly um, go through the dedicated categories as well as subcategories, and and through that filter um, filter the the countries that that do have that particular um, capacity. So um, and over here we have a, we have a, we have an example. So uh, someone clicked on the implementation frame, uh, framework. So that's within the category of policy policies. And um, the, 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 the map colored um, is, is clearly indicating the countries that um, do have certain implementation frameworks in place. Um, another another feature that I do that I teased to a degree already, and I mentioned before, is the comparative uh, comparative function or a function that allows uh, comparing up to three three um, profiles. Um, here we see states, um, and it sort of provides an overview of of the of these policies, um, national policies that they have, and allows for a quick uh, overview, I suppose, of, of the current state of the current state of affairs and in comparative uh, way as well. Uh, one can even um, one can even export this as a PDF and I'll show that again in, in, in a bit. So we rely, we heavily rely on, on information that is provided by states, but also by our respective users. And um, because of that, we, we are, we, I need to emphasize the feedback, the feedback mechanism or feedback tool that we have on our website as well. It allows it allows the the, the users um, to provide any data, um, official source data that pertains to the cybersecurity policy or legislation, but also um, allows to give any sort of feedback that pertains to uh, to our user interface or functionality that we have and and so on and so forth. Um, besides the, the fact that this uh, feedback form is available on website, we also have uh, the, the, web, uh, the dedicated email address, so cyberpolicyportal at un.org. Um, I don't think these phone numbers are relevant anymore, nor is the fax number. 
So that's it for now. Um, but um, before uh, before I give the floor to any possible questions that may have arisen during the during my quick presentation, I'll go through um, I'll go through the website and quickly show you um, how how all these all these features that I just uh, just sort of uh, talked about. So I'll do that for sure. There we go. So I suppose you can see the cyber policy portal right now. The landing page that I mentioned at the, that I mentioned at the beginning. Let me, let me reframe that just in a second. Thank you. Um, so this is the this is the landing page that, that we have, and all the all the country uh, profiles are available by just clicking on a simple on a simple country. So if I if I wish to click on chart, for example. Um, this is this is the, the, the this is the country profile as you can see up here. It was last updated in November 2020, so this one didn't have a lot of changes. Um, but I can quickly expand by clicking on expand all. And this is this is this is the the cybersecurity policy, um, which is it seems non-existent. Perhaps I'd be better off I, if I click on a different country. So I know the Russian Federation is something we really updated recently. Um, so um, this is the strategy uh, uh, strategy document. These are the strategy documents that are available in Russia. If one clicks on read more, we provide a short, brief overview of the particular policy that that we list up here. Um, but um, we always link to the primary sources, um, which are found on the website of, of the Russian Federation website of the Russian Federation. Um, the website of the cyber policy portal includes um, the structure, as I mentioned, uh, pa, 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 as well as the legal frameworks. Views on international law this is a very new category that seems to be gaining a lot of attention. And their involvement in UN processes, as well as other bilateral, multilateral cooperation of the Russian Federation. So as you can see, there's a lot of information available here. So um, instead of uh, going through the, instead of going through the contact us, uh, the feedback form that I mentioned before, um, one can suggest updates also um, directly from the profile of interest um, by clicking on this particular button that takes one on directly on the feedback form. Um, we have a share function as well, as well as the export to PDF, which is probably um, quite, quite um, useful. Uh, I wanted to show a compare function, and I see I've played around with this function just before. And you'll see um, this this website save this um, preferred preferred comparison that I have. And again, um, as it was shown in a PowerPoint presentation, um, we can quickly compare different different categories um, by by doing this function. And at the end, as I mentioned, one can PDF. Oh, voila, that, we have an issue here. Um, one can export quickly to the PDF and we'll, we'll work on this um, error that we got here now. So this is for, 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 for just at the beginning. Um, I welcome any questions, any remarks. Um, I, I see there are three questions already. Give me a second to read through that. The questions are, uh, what is the biggest challenge of running the portal? And can you share with us about a future plans of the portal as well? Thank you. That would be Ms. Filippo. Thank you very much for your questions. Yes, um, I'll start with the bottom one, if you don't mind. I usually go back. So um, we have big plans for, for this year. Well, for next year, sorry. We have big plans for next year. Um, a, lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of updates will happen in the background. Um, we are preparing, as I mentioned, so when, when one clicks on the particular policy or a particular document pertaining to the policy, it takes uh, the user directly to the website of the pertaining country. Now, this will will likely change in the future. We're building a database whereby we will be saving all of the documents on our on our servers. Uh, and there's a there's an important there's an important function behind that. So there's a reason for it. Uh, one being that we will uh, we will allow users to search through all the all the documents, all the policies and legislation 
um, of, of the Karmazal. They'll hopefully increase the, the, the utility of the portal for mostly for the, not only for the policymakers, but also for the researchers. Um, that is a function that we've uh, gotten quite a lot of requests for. So I think um, this will this will come this will come in the second part of the of the next year. And um, the biggest challenge is well, um, we want to do we want to do a lot of things obviously, and um, but unfortunately we need to sort of balance our capacities. There are not a lot of us on the team, and um, right now um, this is this is going to be the biggest. The biggest improvement, so the biggest chunk of our work in the next year. But on top of that, we will be also soon providing the, the um, translations of the user interface in all the official UN languages. So that is that is quite 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 exciting as well. Um, and then the challenges, uh, more broadly, well, one of the challenges that the landscape. Uh, constantly changes um, and very frequently changes. And I think we, we, we need to invest quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of hours in, in desk research as also to, to um, persuade the, the governments to submit their, their, their information. So I think um, that probably takes most of our, most of our time. Ba, 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 another question, a couple of other questions. Uh, one is that I have 10 minutes left to the of the presentation. Thank you to the moderator. And um, policymakers have more feedback received on further UN processes from a king. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the question, um, I guess everyone can read it, but nonetheless, so the question is, is um, referring to the um, outside processes. So the feedback that we receive from academia. So I'll just talk briefly generally about the research community that, that um, is, I think, uh, quite apt uh, using to, of, the, of the CPP. So one frequent request that we receive, and you'll see how this ties into the future plans, is um, the, the, the ability to research um, the views on international law. Um, right now, uh, if one is interested in views on international law, um, the, only, the only way to go through to display all the available documentation related to that on the CPP is to go through through um, filters of subcategories. So I showed you all the ones on the left side. Now, um, in the future, um, we know that, for example, that views on international law are not always, always um, concentrated or part or featured in, in the dedicated documents that are titled views on international law. But, but sometimes the nuggets of the of state practice when it comes to the international law or even opinion um, is, is hidden in various other documents that are, that are published by, by the government. So be it national cybersecurity strategies or even sometimes legislation um, that is dedicated to cyber cybersecurity. Now, um, this tool that we are developing right now that will allow searching through the documents or text itself will, will, will allow the researchers uh, to go through, through the core text of all these documents that are, that are currently linked to external source and, and, and find, find specific, specific keywords, for example, that they're interested, not just generally international law, but specific concepts within the international law. Uh, for example, use of force. And um, through that, um, we'll be able to display all the relevant hits for, for, for these, these particular dom documents. And I think that will probably facilitate, uh, uh, facilitate that um, uh, as well. So we're, we're quite happy about that. One thing that I forgot to mention, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing that I forgot to mention is that not only will we, will we be able to translate the, uh, the user interface in the, in the next year or so, but we'll also provide a, um, um, a short translation of the of the of the, the summaries that we currently provide only in English, unfortunately. But I think that will that will be an automated translation. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that will be only for information purposes. But nonetheless, it is a, is a it is a step towards um, I suppose expanding our our um, utility. Um, Emmanuel, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to uh, read your question if you don't mind. First of all, how do you keep using it? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. It's about a methodology, and sorry, I didn't I didn't I didn't dive into that because I, I thought 
I thought it was a, a bit mundane for now, but thank you. It's a good question. So um, I suppose we have two venues of, of, of getting the, the information. As I mentioned very briefly, we invest a lot of effort in, in persuading the government to provide the information um, that when, when, whenever it's updated. So um, that takes a lot of work and a lot of time. But when this is unavailable, when, when we cannot get through, sometimes we just never receive the information from the governments, then uh, we, we have a dedicated team of uh, one person, sometimes two, that, um, that do desk research. You know? But as I said, we always rely on, on strictly on official sources. This is not, we don't, we don't really, um, we don't come up with our own um, um, policies. We don't, we don't link to policies that are, or to, I don't know, um, to certain, yeah, to secondary sources. We always rely on primary sources. So I think we're, we're quite proud of that, that we're really trying to be as authoritative as possible. What are the opportunities for individuals to contribute to the cyber policy world? Oh, um, you know, uh, as I mentioned, there's a there's a there's a feedback form, and um, um, I don't know, Emmanuel, uh, uh, which which country you're coming from, but um, if you're interested in cyber in cyber policies or legislation, I, I kindly invite you to go through the through the portal and click on the profiles that you're interested in, or even have some knowledge about. And um, if you could could go through the the uh, the policies, legislation, and other entries, and see if there's anything that you think it's outdated, and you have information that, that official again, official information that that you think it would be useful. And if you could submit that by either clicking on top of the profile, um, suggest an update, or going through a contact us form, which allows also providing the, the feedback on the content, and submit submit uh, submit this new content, um, that would be that would be highly appreciated. Um, as I said, you can also send us an email to cyberpolicyportal at un.org. Um, please, when you do so, um, do include the official links um, because that's how that's how we again that's how we, we link to the these these particular documents and policies, legislation, whatever whatever it is. But thanks for the question. That's those are really the two questions. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? to ask anything I think um, we've been we've been reminded one, once again that we only have uh, well by now three minutes to go so anything else nope okay well with that uh, then I will conclude this 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 presentation um, thank you everyone for joining I really appreciate it there was not a lot of us but nonetheless um, it was it was quite quite interesting thanks for the opportunity and have a good uh, rest of the day bye